Well, this year's Nobel Medicine Prize has been awarded to three scientists for their work on the human immune system. The award goes to Americans Mary Brunko and Fred Ramsdale and Japan's Shimon Sakaguchi, who told reporters that the honor came as a surprise. Their research looked at how the immune system fights invaders like bacteria and viruses without attacking the body's own cells. Well, I'm joined now by Gunilla Carlson Hedestam, professor of immunology and part of the Nobel Committee of the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. It's good to have you with us. Tell us more about why you and Thanks the Nobel Committee, why you selected uh, Mary Brunko, Fred Ramsdale, and Shimon Sakaguchi for the prize. Uh, well, this trio uh, broke some new ground and they uh, really worked out what is quite a complex principle on how we recognize foreign versus self, as you just explained. And this is, uh, is really not an easy feat and it was a, a sort of a three-step uh, process where they each contributed critical discoveries. Um, so it's, uh, that is really what the Nobel Prize is all about, is making those groundbreaking discoveries that lead then many other researchers to kind of build and exp and the field really expanded after their, they made their discoveries. Yeah, and, and what impact does their work have on today's science? I mean, we all know someone who has an autoimmune disease, be it diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease. So how can people who are sick today, how can they hope to benefit from this? So I think this is now a very, very active field. And there is, in fact, approximately 200 clinical trials ongoing where uh, clinicians and researchers are trying to find ways to either expand the, the activity of these cells or increase the activity of these regulatory cells in diseases like autoimmune diseases and also in some uh, skin allergies, for example. So. There is, there is actually, you know, many diseases where there is potential for these treatments to, to provide new uh, sort of approaches to, to, to handle them. And transplantation is, of course, also a classic example of where you may want to control the immune system. And this is what these cells do. They are, and they are basically programmed to control our immune system so we don't respond too strongly to the wrong things. Was um, another really interesting and important area is cancer, mm -hmm. and that is actually the opposite. In those cases, you want to uh, block the activity of these cells um, to enhance immunity against the tumor. So it really touches upon quite a lot of different diseases. Was there a particular moment or breakthrough in the research of this trio that the committee found especially compelling? Yes, um, I mean, there's two parts to it, really. Um, Sakaguchi did the first discoveries, and he, he was very, very persistent. He had a notion, he understood that there must be a type of T cell. This is all about the white blood cells, the T cells. And he understood that there must be a, a sort of a, a guardian cell that ensures that we don't respond to the wrong things. So he worked in the 80s and the 90s, and eventually was able to show that these cells exist. But the sort of uh, critical evidence didn't come until a few years later when Mary Branco and Fred Ramstel were able to actually show what genes control these cells. And this together then really was sort of nailed the discoveries and, and showed that this is a very specific type of cell that is programmed to dampen the immune response in contrast to our other T cells that are there to to attack, mm -hmm. uh, but it's too dangerous uh, to have an immune system that doesn't have these checks and balances because the immune system is very powerful. So, you to to characterize this extra this extra layer of the immune system was very important. And once we understand that, we can also then work towards uh, using it. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating, and uh, we understand there is a woman among the three winners. She's only the 14th woman out of 232 laureates to get a Nobel in medicine. What do we know about Mary Brunko? 
So this is actually a good question because we did not know much uh, in terms she has kept a fairly low profile. She has not had a classic academic career. She's working as a, as a very distinguished staff scientist uh, at an institute in Seattle, but uh, not sort of having her own typical academic career and she's not a professor, etc. But she did these extremely important findings and, and this is what she's awarded for. And that is uh, enough for a Nobel Prize. It's, uh, it's exactly what Nobel Prizes are for, is to pinpoint those very important uh, breakthroughs that allow other people to then expand and build on that field. So I would say this morning we didn't know much about Mary Branko. Of course, we in the committee did because we have researched everything that was done from the very early days mm -hmm. of this field. But uh, the world in general did not know much about her. But I think that's all changed today because I can see that mm -hmm. uh, she's already done a lot of interviews during yes. the day. So yeah. it will right. be very exciting to, to hear what she has to say when she comes to Stockholm in December. It will be for sure. Ganilla Carlson, Hedestam, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Thank you. Thanks very much. And joining me here at the big table now is our science reporter, Matthew Ward Aegis. Matthew, it's good to see you again. A Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for Research on the Immune System. How significant is this? Pretty significant when it comes to, you know, the thing that's designed to protect us from getting sick. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, for most of us, it works pretty well, the immune system. Sometimes, though, it doesn't work quite the way we want it to. And people get things called autoimmune disorders. And we probably know of these more commonly as things like diabetes or Crohn's disease or rheumatoid arthritis is just a few of many examples. What this research uh, recognises is understanding, foundational understanding of how the immune system sometimes uh, gets the job done and sometimes isn't able to do so. In 1995, they discovered that T cells, which we already knew about, were regulated by something that is now called regulatory T cells. Mm -hmm. Imagine a traffic warden coming in and saying, OK, these traffic lights are doing their job, but the traffic lights aren't always doing their job and I'm going to fix those ones up. And in this case, regulatory T cells work out which immune cells aren't working and doing their job and gets them out of that situation. Mm -hmm. The other part of the research was to actually understand why that process is, is sometimes not working. And that is to say there's a mutation on a particular gene and if that exists in some people, maybe these regulatory T cells aren't able to function the way that we need them to. So ultimately, it's an understanding or recognition of the understanding that this is how our immune system is able to work effectively, the cells that are involved in that process and why sometimes they don't work. So if we have a better understanding of why the immune system sometimes breaks down and attacks itself, what does it mean for people with these autoimmune diseases? Like you said, people with Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, I mean, can they look forward to a future with perhaps better treatments or even a cure? I think that's the question that everyone is asking, isn't it? Um, and the answer probably in this case is a, a cautious yes. Mm. Um, as I say, it's foundational. So we're recognising the achievement and the discovery of how these things work. The next question is can we translate that into something that works for people? Mm. There are about 200 or so clinical trials underway into various drugs and therapies that might help fix these malfunctioning regulatory T cell processes uh, in people that need it to be fixed. Mm -hmm. But they haven't gone to producing these drugs and for many of these clinical trials, they're coming back negative. We're not actually able to say this is advancing us in the direction we want. So uh, the promise is in what could happen in the future, recognising it's taken 30 years for us to recognise these discoveries, mm -hmm. um, it could take you know, 20 to 30 years more for us to actually get something people can use. And that, that's a long time. And, you know, we hear all the time how difficult it is to, to get animals to do these testing, to get people to do these testing. And at the same time, we're hearing that AI is going to change everything and that we're going to be able to have, I guess, individually designed, genetically designed treatments, but we're not there yet. That makes me wonder, the, the Nobel Prize for or in medicine, how relevant is it really now? I think it's always a, an interesting question to ask. We've got all these prizes that recognise scientific achievements. The Nobel Prizes are right at the top. And tomorrow we'll recognise a physics recipient and chemistry on Wednesday. Uh, what is the significance? What is the relevance of the Nobel Prize? It acknowledges the work that, in this case, three people have done in terms of discovery and understanding of this particular field. But ultimately, these are three people that are kind of totemic in a way. They represent many 
diverse contributions across this mm -hmm. particular new field, effectively, that is being recognised uh, today. Um, hundreds, thousands of scientists all contributing over a very long period of time to say this is what we didn't know 30 years ago mm -hmm. and now we actually understand how these things work. The next step, as I say, is to translate that. And the Nobel Prize is really that opportunity to recognise for three people with a cash prize as well yeah, uh, sure. what that achievement is. All right, our science reporter, Matthew Ward-Ages. Matthew, good to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you.